Entry number one. Date, July 2nd, 1946. My name is Proteus. I'm a narrow gauge engine who used to work on the Barrow Light Railway in Barrow Inverness, England. Now, I'm, well, I'm not really anywhere. I was destroyed in an explosion in 1919 and was brought to somewhere that's not part of your realm. I realise that probably makes no sense and, to be honest, I don't know why I'm even saying this. It's not like anyone's going to listen to these. Well, I suppose I could place these entries in the world somewhere for someone to find. But I'm going off topic. I'm doing this, and future entries, to document an experiment I'm about to take on. Let me explain. Around this world are these bright glowing crystals that hold unimaginable power. They can heal, they can boost one's energy, they can give strength. However, someone needs to make sure people will use them for these purposes, and not for any evil deeds. That someone is me. However, it's a large world, and my movements are limited. Since I died in Britain, I have a strong connection there, but not anywhere else. I can see everywhere, but I can't go everywhere. So I have come up with a plan that will make things a little bit easier. I will select three engines and use the gems to grant them certain gifts so they can help me with this large task. They should be able to know where gems are located and if anyone is using them. I understand that there is great risk in doing this. But, there is also great potential. I will do a second entry when I've made my selections. <coughs> entry number 2. Date, July 3rd, 1946. Well, I have selected three engines. One from America and two from Britain. The American is called Lexi and she is what they call a cab forward engine. This means that the cab is at the front rather than the back. It's rather remarkable. Next is a little rail traction engine named Theo. Interestingly, this one had a cab roof, whereas other examples I've seen were open. Then there is Merlin, a King Arthur class locomotive from the Southern Railway. What struck me about this one is that he had three funnels instead of one. From what I've learned, they were added so he could hide himself from German bombers during the Second World War. Apparently, however, they were unsuccessful. Oh well. Not surprisingly, they were a little scared when I greeted them, but once I explained everything, they settled down and became intrigued. I granted them the gifts I mentioned in the first entry, and at first, they said they felt strange when I did, but I assured them that that was completely natural. Now that they have a connection to the gems, all I need to do now is to sit and wait. Entry number 3. Date, July 4th, 1946. Today was a very good day. The three engines still ran well and wisely didn't reveal their new powers to anyone. I was able to contact them as I pleased and would ask how they were doing. All three responses were positive. They said they could feel where the gems were in their areas and that no one had disturbed them. Needless to say, I'm a very happy engine. However, this is the first day of the experiment and I want to wait until the end of the week before saying it is a success. But so far, so good. Entry number 4. Date, July 5th, 1946. Today was strange, to say the least. The experimentals still worked fine, but they were different this day. For some reason, 
Lexi kept changing her accent. At one point she was speaking American, the next she was British, and at one time she was speaking in French. It was very strange and also a little annoying. As for Merling, well, he would often brag to the other engines, saying that with his three funnels he could become invisible. I know that is not true, only I have that power. In Theo's case, nothing too weird, although I noticed a slight drop in his confidence. He was a little nervous at times, and didn't speak as much as he used to. I assume these are merely side effects of the experiment, and will go away within a few days. Hopefully. Entry number 5. Date, July 6th, 1946. Today was even stranger than the last. Merling, Lexi and Theo had changed so much that they're almost unrecognisable. Lexi was focusing so much on changing her accent every few seconds that she made several mistakes when working, such as running into sidings and bumping into trucks. Theo suffered an even greater drop in his confidence. He did less work, shunted smaller trains and barely said a word. And don't get me started on Merling. His belief in his apparent ability to be invisible became larger. He was so maniacal. Shouting things I couldn't understand before puffing large chunks of smoke from his funnels. He would then say no one could see him as he was invisible, when he was clearly not. As I said in the previous entry, I hope that this is just a side effect and everything will return to what it should be, but I'm beginning to wonder if this is the result of the experiment. Entry number 6. Date, July 9th, 1946. I know it's been a few days since the last entry, but I just needed time to think before speaking again. The experiment was a failure. All three engines suffered horrific deaths. Lexi was so distracted from constantly changing her accent, she went onto an old line that ran alongside a cliff. The rails were so weak and rusty, they couldn't hold her weight. She came off the line and fell over the cliff. All of Theo's confidence was destroyed. He was so scared of anything that he ran onto the main line away from the yard. Unfortunately, he didn't notice the fast good string on the same line until it was too late. He was in so many pieces, the numbers of them were almost endless. And Merling? For some reason, a yard foreman decided to give him the job of pulling a munitions train. He was yelling and laughing so much that he carelessly bumped his trucks. It was only a matter of time before one of them exploded. While everyone believes these were just accidents, I know that that is far from the truth. I soon encountered the spirits of these three, and deeply apologised for my actions, though 
I doubt they'll ever forgive me. And they definitely didn't seem to when I saw them. After thinking it all through, I realised that I overreacted. I overthinked. I conducted this experiment because I believed I couldn't handle my responsibility alone. But if that was the case, then I would not have been the only one given it. However, I was the only one, because I can handle it alone. I understand this now, and that's what I'll do. From this moment onward, I will still guide others who are in need of it, as that is one of my other duties. But that's all I'll do. I won't interfere with anyone, as I did to Merlin, Lexi, and Theo. I said, in my first entry, that I would place these audio entries in some part of the world for someone to find. Well, I've decided to do that once I finish talking here. So, if you're listening to this, please, don't repeat my mistake. <laughs>